Oh my god. <laughs> oh, yo, I'm screenshotting this, bro. I'm screenshotting this. Headshot F1, 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 all at the exact same time, dude. Oh, that's insane. This video is rated T or Tickle Me Pink. What's going on, shitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Tickle Me Pink, your least favorite content creator. Today, we're going to be talking about grenades as well as other tactical ordinances. I've noticed a lot of the player base treats all grenades the same. You know, you throw them, they explode, they're all the same, right? However, Battlestate Games has been very particular with the grenades they chose in Escape from Tarkov to give us a grenade for all sorts of different situations. For example, how much your grenade is going to bounce off of something. Obviously, things like the fuse time, the fragmentation amount, and other weird and quirky properties like certain grenades roll a certain direction when you throw them. Once I show you guys all these tips and tricks, you're going to secure yourself way more kills with grenades. Hopefully you're still on that Grenadier quest or something, you can actually put these tips to use. But you're also going to go ahead and know what grenades to bring to what map to actually have an effective grenade for that map. So let's hop into this video. I just want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Before we go any farther, I actually signed a contract with them where I have boxes to give out to you guys. If you've never had HelloFresh and you live in the US, I can get you guys free food this week. Just go ahead and shoot me a message on Discord. Tell me you're interested in the HelloFresh deal. I also get paid when I give you guys free groceries. So go ahead and get in contact with me. You're doing me a favor. I'm doing you a favor. Let's continue with the video. All right, the first thing I need you guys to know about grenades, it's not even a property of grenades, but anytime you pull out a grenade and escape from Tarkov, the character's going to go ahead. He's going to unpin it with his left hand, put it in his right hand, and he's going to put his left hand up in front of the screen. And the index finger on your left hand is actually where that grenade is going to go. The only other thing you want to be careful of is you want to be very careful of WASD, any of those movement keys right as you toss that grenade because it'll really influence the angle or the bloom of that grenade coming out of your hand. If you want to throw pinpoint and accurate grenades, I just want to take a step out, climb that finger and quickly throw it. You can even line it up behind cover then lean out, throw it, lean back in. That's going to get you accurate grenades. There's a plethora of stats in grenades that a lot of people don't know about. We can start with some really basic ones like things like the fuse timers. And there's things like the throw strength stat of grenades, the roll patterns of grenades, the shrapnel, the concussion distance of grenades. We'll talk about those here in just a second. So the first thing you really need to know about all these grenades is their various fuse times. It's the most important piece of information you can learn before their special property. So let's talk about all of that first. So the VOG 25, it's a little stubby black grenade that has a fuse time of around two seconds. Usually by the time it lands, it is exploding. It probably spends around half a second on the ground. Obviously, it depends on how far you throw it. The VOG 17, it's like a very small black grenade, very slender back grenade. That has a fuse time of around three seconds. Now, that seems quite long. However, this one you don't have a whole lot of time to react to as well. The F1 is in at 3.5 seconds, as well as the RGD5 also at 3.5 second fuses. And the M67 is in at 5 seconds of fuse time. I feel like most people feel like grenades are pretty standardized around that F1, the RGD. But if you see a grenade flying in, you can use this information to save your life. And for another tip for you guys, in Escape from Tarkov, you can easily tell what grenade is being thrown your way by the sound it makes on the ground. Now, this is going to come with time, so don't sweat about learning it in this video or anything like that. You can use that, or if you spot it coming your way in the distance, you can go ahead and use that information. You know you have that much time to get away from the grenade and prone just before it goes off. And why you're proning is you're trying to make yourself the smallest target possible. You want to put your feet towards where that grenade is going to explode. You want to make yourself the smallest possible target for that grenade. You want as few pieces of shrapnel to hit you as possible, and this will save your life countless times. Look at this clip right here. This thing landed like five feet from me. It was a VOG 25, so I only had about a half a second to react to it. I only got about five meters away and it saved my life. So that's a little bit of hidden tip for you guys right there. All right, the first thing I wanna talk about is the RGN, the F1 grenades. We're gonna talk about the nitty gritty of these grenades. Is they're gonna be probably the grenades you guys have used the most so far. And understanding their special properties is really gonna help you secure kills. So like we mentioned, the F1 grenade has a 3.5 second delay. And your character has a throw strength of around 80. We'll just call this the standard throw strength. What does that roughly mean? If you were to like, you know, throw that head level, if you're going to throw that, like you're throwing a football at your friend, you're probably going to make it around 40, maybe 50 meters if you don't aim up a lot. Your strength skill does influence how far you can throw grenades as well as your throwable skill. So it'll go up with time. So just keep that in mind. If you're a low, low level, you might want to aim up just a little bit more than that. Now, when it comes to the F1's properties, when you throw it at objects, it's basically if it hits a wall, it's kind of just bounce straight down to the ground. These do not bounce very much. So if you try and like, you know, bank it off a wall and try and get around the corner, 
it's really just going to drop straight down. So keep that in mind. So you really want to make sure you get these on target. And the way you can get them on target is by utilizing its roll pattern. So an F1 grenade has a left hand roll on it. So if you throw it down in a straight line, once it hits the ground, it's going to continue to arc and roll to the left. Imagine like a 90 degree turn to left and it's just going to make that arc and continue to roll and eventually start spinning and spinning around in circles like a parabola. You can utilize this to get this behind cover. Whenever you're looking down the hall, he's on the left hand side. It's a great time to get an F1 on him. If he's on the right hand side, maybe don't try and do this. This is naturally just going to roll away from him. Now the concussion radius is quite high on the F1 at 12 meters. The concussion radius is when your character's ears are all blown out, you have a hard time hearing. So you can utilize these to go ahead and throw them, concuss them, and then push up on them while they're having a hard time hearing. It's also great to just go ahead and utilize throwing grenades whenever you want to make loud noise and you don't want the enemy to have that information. So that's a little bit of a hidden tip that most players never utilize in this game from Tarkov. The only other really special property of the F1 is it has a lot of shrapnel inside of it. So they're exposed to this grenade at all there's a good chance it's going to really injure them or kill them based on how close they were to the explosion distance if you're like right in the center of the explosion it just flat out kills you in escape from tarkov but as you get further and further the shrapnel starts to lose damage and like with the f1 the shrapnel here because it has so much of it isn't quite as potent as other grenades but with that you're really likely to maim your target with this grenade so make sure you're utilizing that left hand bank or utilizing its concussion radius to secure yourself kills with the F1 grenade. I personally like to use my F1 grenades on maps like Customs, maps like Interchange, and maps like Streets, specifically in those mid-range engagements where you have someone behind cover, maybe they're behind a car, right around a building. You can go ahead and chuck it, get it around that cover, and there's a good chance it's going to mortally maim them, it's going to concuss them, and you can push up on them and secure the kill after that. And with all these grenades, I'll just go ahead and give you guys a recommendation on what maps I think they're the best on. And as a hidden tip, I would just always utilize the same grenade in the same raid. So let's say even if you don't have F1s for something like customs, you're always using like VOG grenades in one raid. So you don't have like a mixed match of grenades. So you're not pulling it out like a random wild card. Not sure what you're going to have in your hand. So you always know what tool you have ready to go. The next thing I want to talk about is your other bread and butter grenade you're going to be using starting off and through a lot of your Tarkov journey. And that is the RGD5 grenade. So it's very similar to F1 grenade. It has the same 3.5 second fuse. You can throw it about 25% farther than an F1 grenade, and it doesn't have any roll pattern on it. It just wants to roll in a straight line. So use that to your advantage. If you have someone on that right hand side, left hand side, doesn't really matter. This is a jack of all trades. It's not going to act crazy on you, and you're not going to get really special properties with this grenade, like being able to bank it behind cover, like something like the F1. However, you're going to know exactly what it's going to do. So if you're brand new to the game, you don't want to be like hyper focused on what your grenade is going to do when you throw it using something like the RGD can really come in clutch in that regard. But when you're using this grenade, I would really make sure you go ahead and underhand it over cover, left hand it over cover. It's gonna be hard to really get it on target without that roll factor on it. And it does go ahead and have less shrapnel than F1. However, that shrapnel is gonna hurt quite a bit more. So if you get this near someone, they are likely to be either mortally wounded or dead. The only other thing you really need to know about this is it has less of a concussion radius. So it doesn't suppress as much as something like the F1 would. Just like the F1 grenades, these are not bouncy whatsoever. If you throw them in a wall, they'll just drop straight down at the ground, so that's good to know as well. So what do I like to use? The RGD. I personally like to use it on maps like Woods, Shoreline, anywhere I'm going to be fighting outside because of its extended throw distance over something like the F1, as well as its very predictable roll pattern. It's very predictable on uneven surfaces. I know where it's going to go where something like the F1 with a left-hand roll, uneven terrain. It can really ramp off things and just end up way off target from where I threw it. The RGD is just so much more predictable on these outside maps. And it's just like the bread and butter of these outside maps for your mid-range to mid to long range engagements. All right, now I wanna talk about the M67 grenade. Now you guys really need to utilize the M67 grenade. I see hardly any players utilize this grenade whatsoever. I think the only other person I really ever see use this grenade is a Willer Z. And he knows all the special properties of this grenade and it gets him a lot of kills. It's one of the funnest grenades in the game. And it'll secure you a ton of kills and open up a brand new play style that you cannot play unless you utilize this grenade. So let's talk about the special properties of the M67. So the M67 is an extremely lightweight grenade. And because of that, your character can huck this thing. Pretend you're the best pitcher in Major League Baseball. And that is you when you throw M67s. You can throw these so far. Combine that with the fact that they have a five second fuse. You can do a lot of fun things. So you're going to hear five second fuse. And you're going to wonder, how are you going to get kills with the M67? it can be challenging if you treat it like a normal grenade. 
However, you're going to treat this like utility. So some cool things you can do with M67s is they have insane bounce properties. So like the RGD or like the F1 grenade where they just hit a wall, they drop straight to the ground. The M67, you can throw it at a wall and it'll bank off it just exactly how you imagine it would and go behind cover. So you can use this to go ahead and bounce off multiple walls and get yourself out of a bad situation and cover you when otherwise you wouldn't be able to get out of a shitty situation. You can also go ahead and utilize the M67 to go ahead and aim it straight in the air. And because it has such a long fuse time, you really want to arc it up. Like you're looking almost directly in the sky, maybe aim down 10, 15, 20 degrees, and you'll get the feel for it depending on how far forward you need to get that grenade to land. And you throw it straight up in the air. Now, what's that going to do? If you have an enemy behind cover, let's say behind a, a big piece of cover right in front of you, it's going to arc straight up and come down and it's gonna blow up right over their heads. They will not have any time to react to it. They won't hear it. It'll blow up like a foot above their head. And if any of that shrapnel gets near them, they're instantly dead. This grenade has a very average amount of shrapnel. It doesn't have the strongest shrapnel, it doesn't have the weakest shrapnel. But when you're using this airburst tech, you'll always kill them because it's hitting their face, their thorax, where most of their grenades are gonna be hitting their legs and stomach. Something that makes this airburst technology so much more valuable and let's say maybe underhanding an F1 over or something, underhanding an RGD like we mentioned those are going to end up landing at their feet and they will have time to react to them but also with this long fuse time you're going to have time to throw the grenade pull your gun out and wait for that explosion it's going to concuss them or kill them and right as it's exploding you swing around the corner around half a second later they can't hear anything they're already wounded they're confused as to what just hit them and you just gun them down I use this deck all the time especially on maps like streets of Tarkov and it is a godsend. This is my go-to grenade on also maps like labs. And one thing I like to do is I told you earlier to always bring one type of grenade in your pockets because your character randomly fishes them out of his pockets. Something I'll do is if I like a certain grenade, let's say, for example, I recommend you guys use the RGD on woods, for example, in the last grenade. M67s can still be a great tool with all the things I just mentioned. So what I'll do is I'll put one in my backpack and if there's a time where it comes where I really need to have an M67 because it is a niche piece of utility, I'll pull it out, bind it and quickly pull it out. It takes like an extra two seconds. That way I'm not accidentally pulling out an M67 when I need more of a standard grenade. The only other thing you need to know about the M67 is it has a straight roll. However, you're not going to really be rolling it down. I have a few times thrown one and just like let it roll down a street so it will roll a long ways and it's kind of hard to hear it like that and it can go underneath let's say a car for example right between the wheels and blow someone up but it's pretty hard to pull off and i wouldn't say it's super consistent when doing that so next thing i want to talk about is the vog 17 so the vog 17 is kind of like a mix between a m67 and then something more standard like an f1 grenade so it has a shorter fuse time first and foremost it's a three second fuse time so lower than the rgd lower than the f1 your enemies are not going to have a whole lot of time to prepare for this but as a trade-off the explosive radius as well as the concussion radius is going to be quite a bit lower just like the f1 grenade it's going to have a lot of shrapnel but not necessarily the strongest shrapnel it'll likely wound them unless you really get it on target now how can you get it on target well the vog 17 actually rolls to the right and if you've been playing this game for a little while maybe last wipe or so you know players fell in love with right hand peaking now that we have shoulder swapping it doesn't really matter what side you peek from as your gun will get around the corner and you can get shots on target well but a lot of people, let's say like labs only players, are still stuck in their ways of always peeking the same angles, the same right hand angles over and over. Well, that's where the VOG 17 comes in handy. Some people are stuck in these old ways. It rolls down the hallway, it goes around to the right, and it's going to explode right on this guy who wants to get a right hand peek on you. Additionally, it's a really, really short view. So this roll is really easy to utilize. If you're still stuck on Grenadier, I would make sure you're utilizing the VOG 17 between that short fuse, between that right hand roll you're easily going to start mopping people up with the Vogue 17. And I would just recommend you go ahead and utilize Mechanics Barter to get the Vogue 17s. You can get them for a lot cheaper. Every reset, you can get five of these for five fuses. And it's cheaper than buying them off the flea market. The Vogue 17 can bounce off walls a little bit. Not nearly as good as an M67, but more than something like the F1 and the RGD. And you can throw it a very long ways. Not as far as an M67, but farther than an RGD. Because of its roll properties, its short fuse as well as its small blast radius. I personally like to run Vox 17s on like indoor climates. Let's say I'm going to dorms on customs. I'm going to the bunker on reserve. I want to go to labs. Utilizing that right hand roll, the short fuse, is going to come really in handy when there's a lot of hard cover and a lot of people that want to be on those right hand angles. 
the last explosive grenade I want to talk about is the VOG 25. So the VOG 25 has the shortest fuse in the game. All right. This thing only has a fuse of two seconds, right? By the time it lands, it's usually going off in around half a second or less. People really do not have any time to react to it whatsoever. It has a pretty big explosion radius and concussion radius given its short fuse time. It's about the same as the last grenade, but with a whole second less than that fuse. Now it's gonna have way less of that shrapnel, but it's gonna have very deadly shrapnel. So you can bank this off walls a little bit because of its short fuse, you don't really ever wanna use it in that instance. And it's roll pattern is just a straight line roll, just like the RGD. But once again, with this short fuse, you're really gonna be throwing this thing. It's gonna be landing and instantly killing anyone. If you get it anywhere near them, they are going to die. So unlike the RGD, you're going to want to use this in close quarter situations, even mid range situations. Sometimes it's not going to make it to your target in time. If you're talking like 80 meters out, 60, 70 meters out, you're not going to be able to get that throw that far out before the grenade explodes. So make sure you're utilizing it up close. Once again, people just have no time to react to this thing whatsoever. It's why it's the most expensive grenade out right now. Although on paper, it looks like an absolute killing machine. I still like the special properties of something like the F1 or the VOG 17 to make sure it banks around cover because people just aren't ready for that. They're going to hear that grenade land in the hallway, but they're not going to hear it roll around to behind their cover. And once you guys get comfortable with banking, air bursting, and rolling grenades, you're going to be getting kills like no one's business because most people just throw grenades right where someone's at like you would with this VOG 25 and people just run away. Now the VOG 25, they might not react to it in time, but you saw that clip earlier where I was able to just go ahead and prone and live through one of these as well. The only other grenades that are to talk about are the impact grenades in Escape from Tarkov. There's not a whole lot to say. You throw these fuckers, they're going to go ahead and meet a wall or any other surface and they're going to fucking explode. The only thing that's kind of fun to know about these is you can actually shoot these out of the air and they do have like a minimum arm distance. So you just need to go ahead and chuck these around like five meters in front of you for them to go off. Just a quick honorable mention, smoke grenades are in the game. I wouldn't recommend using the Russian ones like the big carrot looking sticks. If you want to use smoke grenades, I'd make sure you buy the ones from Peacekeeper. They do take a while to go off. I like to bring one or sometimes two to a map like Interchange, for example, or if I'm going to go to Reserve Bunker. If I just need to make sure I go ahead and close off an angle, if I'm getting shot from two angles, it can be a godsend. If your friend's in bad trouble, you can go ahead and throw one on him to get him out of trouble. But they're super, super niche and really hard to utilize. If you don't want to bring them at all, I totally understand. Other things being niche are flashbangs. So they change flashbangs so you can look away from them, kind of like CSGO style, right? And sure, you can pop flash, but they don't really have any concussion on them. You're just better off throwing grenades. So I really wouldn't recommend you guys use flashes. If you want to flash people, go ahead and load some flashbang shells in a KS-23 and have fun with that. But at this time, there's never a case use where I bring flashbang. Hopefully, that answered all your guys' questions about grenades. Make sure to smash the dislike button and tell me to commit toaster bath in the comments down below. If you haven't seen the best rifle in Escape from Tarkov this wipe, I'll have that on the screen right now. Look forward to seeing you guys on the stream and in the Discord. Peace out, guys.